Hi, my name is Dion Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's Forex and Gold Supply and Demand Fundamental and Technical Analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and an equally warm welcome to you if you are returning. And uh, if you find the analysis that I provide every week useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues. And so let's get into the week ahead, which can be found if you're new on tradingeconomics.com. Um, this is the website, it's week ahead. They normally do that on a Saturday or a Sunday. And I'm just going to go through the synopsis, really. You can go through the details if you want, um, uh, just by obviously clicking on the uh, the week ahead and have a read, which is definitely worth doing. So this week ahead, um, just as, as a summary, it will be a very busy week in the US uh, with Federal Reserve's interest rate decisions, labor report and earnings report taking center stage. Also, investors will be closely watching central bank meetings at the United Kingdom, Australia, Norway and Malaysia and GDP growth and inflation rate figures from the euro area so all that is definitely a, a busy week uh, finally china will be releasing uh, manufacturing and services pmis for october so um yeah lots going on this week and let's see um you know what happens uh, and let's get into I guess a bit more um of the fundamentals as well as some technical starting off on the dollar index and just a measure of dollar strength and last week i was saying that you know for me anyway my bias is to buy uh, the dollar doesn't mean that the dollar is going to go up every single week even though i have a, a bullish bias and again this isn't you know uh, any kind of financial advice just letting you know what my bias is based off of the uh, fundamental analysis research that i do and so um we did kind of break through the uh, this demand zone, but came down to the 109s, uh, bounced from there. And, um, you know, this was basically due a pullback. If you look at basically the year to date um, uh, price action, this is just a pullback. If you, you know, you tend to zoom in, which traders tend to do for some reason, um, you know, uh, then it looks like a deeper pullback than what it really is. So always zoom out, give yourself a, a bit of perspective as to you know what what is actually happening with, happening with price, um, and it may, might not be as bad as it seems, right? So my bias is to the long side. Um, you know, uh, if you've been following along anyway, you'll know the reasons why the, the basically the Fed, as much as um, uh, people tend to focus and hyper focus on what's happening in the US economy, for me, it is still the uh, the best, the worst, you know what I mean, of, of, of all the economies in the global economy um, in terms of uh, their uh, economic standing and what their central bank is doing with interest rates. And so the Fed and the Bank of England prepare for 75 basis points um, this week and the US jobs data may show weak euro area GDP seen slowing um, but we focus on the US um, and the Federal Reserve so the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England may both only 75 basis point uh, interest rate hikes in the coming days in a show of aggression towards inflation which they have to you know inflation has been as they call it sticky and to get inflation down you have to kind of hike interest rates if it's not coming down even in the face of mounting recession risks and the transatlantic double act illustrates uh, the trade of confronting central banks as evidence of an impending global economic contraction becomes harder to ignore even as inflation lingers and for the fed the fourth uh, such outsized move on wednesday will bring it to a crossroads the damage to growth inflicted by policy tightening is no longer being masked by the buoyancy of the post-pandemic economy while its success in taming inflation has yet to materialize and though we recently had some uh, some decent news on the um on the economic front gdp wise for the uh, for the us uh, for the third quarter and so um, for me, uh, the US at the moment is still in a pole position. Um, we'll get onto the, you know, the Bank of England situation and, and the pound uh, a bit later. But uh, also as well, the jobs market, you know, is, is our defying central bankers efforts to cool demand. And so unemployment remains low in developed um, economies as rates soar and weaker hiring would allow central banks to slow tightening. And this is because, in fact, unemployment is actually linked to inflation. And if un unemployment rises, um, inflation uh, uh, can uh, and does has a, have a correlation where it actually uh, starts to come down. Um, 
and uh, robust rate labor markets are defying central bankers' efforts to tamp down inflation and economists' predictions that a recession is just around the corner. So it's a strong jobs market is good for workers, but it's bad for inflation, signaling the world's central banks, which are raising interest rates at the most aggressive pace in decades, that they can't ease up. And in fact, it might sound counterintuitive, but central banks actually want a bit of unemployment, not too much unemployment, but they want unemployment um, to kind of um, help to bring down inflation. And as borrowing costs surge with, uh, and growth slows, unemployment rates are not rising. Um, instead, companies across developed uh, economies are complaining of chronic worker shortages, a persistent mismatch between demand for new hires and uh, the supply of workers is supporting wages and shielding consumers from slowdowns just when central banks need fading demand to cool inflation. And so... Um, yeah, there's 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 a there's a lot going on here, and just a quote from um, uh, Joseph Lipton at uh, J.P. Morgan. It says, "You see broad-based strength in labour markets." Says Joseph Lipton, a global economist at J.P. Morgan. Strong jobs growth is absolutely the central support for the consumer. So it's supporting the economy, right? Um, but at the same time, it's um, not helping with inflation. At the, you know when when central banks actually want inflation to come down, so um, a bit of a conundrum for all central bankers, right? Not just the, the, not just the Fed, but it's all central bankers. Um, but that puts the Fed in a decent position in in so far as you know rate hikes um, potentially at least are being supported at least in the short term by the economy. So for me, it's just about continual buys for the dollar now. Um, Dollar index obviously is just a measure of dollar strength and you can use it in correlation or confluence with uh, any kind of dollar buyers and a dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD if that's your if that's the way that you want to buy. So um, for me, decent buying opportunity coming down to this demand zone uh, and even better if prices do come down before uh, the rate hike. I think the rate hike has probably been priced in already, but it's all about future rate hikes um, and looking to see what the, uh, the Fed actually say and if they're you know uh, still hawkish because if they're still hawkish about a potential oh sorry that's meant to be a k i s h sorry if that looks a bit um un illegible but if um the fed come out on wednesday and they are still hawkish and they're indicating another 75 basis points or at least that's what the market thinks then you should see in fact you know the, the dollar at least over the medium term towards the end of the year start to um look to uh, still strengthen right um, and so there was something from HSBC I was thinking whether I should clue this or not but I thought I might as well um, in, in the analysis HSBC um, they say until the broader drivers of the US dollar right which has been global growth risk appetite and relative yields show a bigger shift it may be too premature to call for a weaker dollar because there's, there's been a lot of talk about potentially you know the fed uh, pivoting right there's been some fed pivot talk and that's understandable but until certain you know fundamental shifts happen then you you know i think shorting the dollar might be a bit too uh, premature and I, and I would have to agree with that Anyways, um, so my bias is to, you know, continue to buy the dollar unless there are some fundamental shifts. Moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen. Um, again, looking at the year to date, zooming out, you know, you're seeing just a little bit of a pullback. The yen, uh, uh, the Bank of Japan actually did have... Um, an announcement, but the but the but they're basically they're still sticking with ultra low rates policy path, and the central bank keeps negative rates and 0.25 percent cap on yields. So the Bank of Japan stood pat by its ultra low interest rates amid fresh government support, pushing back against lingering market speculation. It will adjust policy as it continues to predict inflation will cool at two percent next year. So they haven't changed their monetary policy. Um, they are still intervening or looking to intervene. Um, and that's basically what pushed you know prices down um, about maybe about 600 pips or so 500 pips something to that effect but um, I'm not sure whether it's going to continue going to the downside um, because um, I think you do need a, a definitely more of a fundamental shift right in, in the, 
central bank policy rather than just um, intervention as, as you know that's what how the market is uh, seeing things now so um, this is I think is still a great opportunity to short especially if there is a fundament, fundamental shift on the uh, on the US dollar I think that's going to be a fantastic sell but if you're looking to buy at the moment you still need a, a bit of more of a pullback into that demand zone in order to get long looking at the dollar swiss not really a pair i'm looking to trade uh, last week's analysis is still on here but you can see that i did draw um this area of uh, support and resistance and you can see where prices uh, did actually bounce off of that zone right um support and resistance is a zone and so um a decent buying opportunity there if you was looking to buy the dollar over the swiss franc not really a pair that i'm interested in um, I do like, in fact, this from a um, sell trade opportunity, especially the uh, the this area here. Technically, is nice, but um, you'd have to really believe that the Swiss franc is the um, is a is a short trade as far as is is a bargain uh, price around uh, these highs, the one hundred ones fifties. So, um, for me, if I was looking to buy it out of the two, it'd still be uh, the dollar for now but uh let's see what happens if um, um the dollar again uh, has any fundamental shifts and then i think this would be a very decent you know buy for the uh for the swiss franc uh moving on to the canadian dollar uh looking at last week's uh, analysis we're talking about the 75 basis points that was expected and actually what we ended up getting was um 50 basis points they actually did a um a dovish uh, hike so the market had to kind of reprice uh, the um, the uh, Canadian dollar on many pairs uh, at least temporarily but um, for me again not really a pair that I'm interested in but if I was looking to buy any of these two it would have to be the US dollar and this is a decent area nice fresh area of demand I think that's a nice buying opportunity for the dollar especially because they're more hawkish than the um, than the Canadian dollar so um, for me my bias would be to the upside although um, I'm not really too interested in this pair if prices do come down to the 133s 132 area I think that is a very nice buy opportunity for the uh, the dollar um, if you are looking to buy the Canadian dollar then again these uh, these highs the 140 to 1.39 1 um, area would be a decent area to look for any kind of uh, short trades uh, moving on to the New Zealand dollar US dollar and again just zooming out a bit looking at last week's uh, analysis still on the charts I'll delete it though um, again prices have come up to this area of uh, supply did actually break the supply zone uh, here so uh, you did have a bit of a move to the downside prices are coming to the up to the upside but I, for me I think it's just a case of if you take this high to this low right um, we've really just come up to uh, some fair value right yeah so we've come up to fair value between an obvious um, bargain area for the for the US dollar and expensive area this is pretty much just fair value but if you're looking to trade this to the short side meaning you're looking to buy the US dollar you know on a pullback just before FOMC then um, uh, I think this zone is going to be decent for a nice short trade in in a risk off environment. You know the dollar should you know win even though the, uh, the New Zealand dollar is uh, also the RBNZ. Their central bank is still hawkish as well. Um, I do think that the uh, the dollar should win out in the um, in the um, at least the short term. If you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar, then you do have quite a wide zone of demand uh, with which to buy, but. Um, I would definitely say the best area would be, you know, to look for um, lows around a 155 because this is obviously where the bargain was for the New Zealand dollar or expensive for the US dollar. So if that might be expensive again or a bargain, depending on which way you're looking to uh, what you're looking to buy or looking to sell, right, or looking to short. But my bias would still be to the downside. This is just really a pullback. Um, looking at the pound dollar pound dollar um pound has risen and i'm um, i'm actually uh, short on this trade here i did get stopped out of my final position um small stop uh, stop out on that but i've made money on that so now i've re-entered into a short on this area here and i'll just get rid of uh, some of these uh, uh brushes right and so uh 
I think there was um we did have uh, some weekend analysis, some private weekend analysis where we saw some uh, targets talking about potentially price coming up to the one seventeens, and that makes you know that does make some technical sense as you can see there's a supply zone there, but as well as you have um, the confluence of a um, of some support and resistance, and uh, you know that has been traded. So um, if prices do go higher, even though I'm short on this, I'm still going to continue to short this because if you look at this, if you look at the, the you know the UK fundamentally, um, I think they're they're not as um, uh, again robust as the uh, as the US. In fact, I'll go back to this article first, and it was talking about the Bank of England situation on Thursday is even less comfortable than the you you know than than the feds right because they're talking about the fed in that paragraph so um you know it's even less comfortable as it delivers what would be the biggest uk rate hike since 1989 not only is the country probably already in recession right already in recession whereas you know you've got the us um actually um coming out of a technical recession um uh, uh, it says, but officials are also trying to re-establish the credibility of the U.S. Uh, sorry, the U.K.'s framework after former Prime Minister Liz Truss's uh, unfunded fiscal plan led to a disastrous market crash. So, um, again, with, when when it comes to currency trading, really, you're trading the dog with the least fleas. And um, what you'll see is as well if you go to uh, some of the data. So, where is this data that I put here? It is All right. To United Kingdom, if you go to um, a GDP growth rate, uh, in fact, trading economics is forecasting again minus one percent growth for the third quarter. Right, so the preliminary, the um, you know third quarter growth previous was zero point two, and they're forecasting zero point one. Um, so very very interesting, and I think that that should drive the pound lower. I'm not saying it's going to be today or tomorrow or even this week. We could have a week where prices still go higher, but eventually, I think for me that the you know the downside is um, should at least want to come back down to at least the one tens as a minimum. And if we if I'm shorting at the one sixteens, you know around the one seventeens, that leaves me with at least about seven hundred pips to the downside. Um, you know. Uh, Potentially, but again, this is not you know me telling you to buy or sell the dollar. This is just me telling you what um, I'm doing, not financial advice. But if you do want to be a buyer of the uh, the pound, then you're looking for pullbacks into that area there to look for a buy trade. But um, I do think this is actually quite decent for a uh, for a short over the next um, at least until the end of the year. Um, moving on to the. Euro dollar, euro dollar, and before we start the euro dollar, I just wanted to remind everybody that I do have with Mark Chapman a uh, webinar on Thursday, uh, the third of November. I think last week I might have put Thursday, the fourth of November. There might have been a bit of confusion. My apologies, but it's the uh, 3rd of November this week where I will be discussing um, the fundamental strategies and Mark will be discussing smart money concepts, uh, market maker concepts, um, the market making concepts that you would never have heard but from anyone else on YouTube um, from a real market maker, not necessarily Mark being the market maker but Mark's um, you know, good friend um, who is a market maker and has told him how market makers actually, you know, the business model of market making. So um, if you haven't attended before, please definitely come uh, to um, the webinar you will definitely um, find um, practical uses to what I'm going to tell you uh, when it comes to fundamental analysis uh, strategies and um, please ensure as well that you watch my previous webinar that I did in um, in April because that will help you understand uh, some of the uh, concepts and um, and uh, strategies that I'm going to be showing you uh, on Thursday right so uh, the link will be somewhere in the description box uh, or I'll put it on the uh, top right hand side of the screen if you're watching and uh, it should pop up there so uh, please watch that first before coming and then um, join uh, the zoom call uh, on Thursday the 3rd of November 2022 this year and the link to join will be in the description box below also so back to the euro dollar and the euro dollar has um, had some legs nice little pullback um, was looking at potentially you know some shorts around uh, here but um, in fact 
there was a nice uh, what what traders would call a stop hunt on a lower time frame in and around this area here. I, th I think it was a top, it was a stop hunt. Yeah, it was a stop hunt. Um, can't really get into it right now, but um, uh, basically there was an opportunity to get short as well, just from a um, an extreme example in terms of uh, looking at a fresh area of uh, supply. Right, so you had lower highs and lower lows being made. Nice fresh area of supply. You know, starting from around here. And prices have gone to the downside, and I think with the um, with the FOMC uh, coming on the way uh, this this week, I think what was happening last week was obviously there was um, a liquidity hunt um, because the European Central Bank uh, did kind of uh, go into a bit of a dovish um, a dovish uh, hike uh, because they were not very hawkish. Uh, when it came to um, their future projections. So the ECB's uh, not favours a 50 or 75 basis point hike rate in December, whereas I think before um, they were very hawkish. Now it's like, is it 50 or is it 75 basis points? Whereas the, you know, the Fed are, you know, really looking at, um, you know, I think around about a 50 or so, about 75 basis points uh, hike recently. So Dutch official says another substantial step forward needed and the European Central Bank Governing Council member uh, Klaus Knott would um, uh, favour an interest rate hike of 50 or 75 basis points in December, though he highlighted that a decision has yet to be made. And so a third three-quarter point increase would be possible, but it's too early, says not in an interview on the Butenhof TV show on Sunday. We still have six more weeks to go, and there is still a lot of economic numbers coming out, right? And that is actually really important because depending on the economic numbers, and actually it's something that I'm gonna talk about in the webinar as well, and really how to identify really dovish hikes and when hikes uh, really should appreciate a currency and when they shouldn't appreciate a currency and they tend to devalue a currency. I'm going to be talking about that in the uh, webinar, showing you examples. Um, and uh, yeah, so so the European Central Bank at the moment, um, they have some hawks and some doves. Um, and it looks like there's more hawks just than doves, so it could be just an even split. But uh, let's see what happens. But for me, again, the Europe, uh, Europe are again like the UK uh, in 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 worse shape than the US. So for me, any pullbacks are always, 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 always buying opportunities. And I think this is definitely a nice buying opportunity um, on the euro dollar. Hopefully prices do follow through to the downside because there are targets actually of 95s. So I think this might be actually the high of the uh, the auction or many people would know as a range, right? I think that might be the high right there. And um, we've come up to that and then we should hopefully want to roll over this week. If it goes a bit higher this week, that's all good because then it just means that you can buy uh, the dollar for a cheaper exchange rate. But that's obviously if you want to be a buyer of the dollar, um, again, this is not financial advice. But um, there is a level slightly above it and that level has been touched actually. Uh, the first time, the first time touches are always the best time. Second time touches are okay, uh, but this is probably the better area if it goes up to the 102s 103s i think that is going to be a very nice area to look for um some short trades but for now um i think i'm short uh, from around here and let's see how that uh, does work out um looking at the australian dollar us dollar again we bounce right off of that the top end of that uh, supply zone from last week's analysis um, and uh, pretty much I think everything is, is the same. Um, the dollar should be the dominant currency. The RBA is um, hawkish, although there was um, uh, uh, inflation that actually came out uh, quite, um, it came out uh, more than, than, than uh, expected, um, higher than expected inflation print, which I think may uh, actually uh, make the RBA a bit more hawkish potentially but um it really depends but i would i would assume so but against the us dollar um i think they're still you know lagging behind so i do think that any any pullbacks to supply should be uh shorting opportunities um if you're looking to trade this pair if you are looking to buy i would definitely say the lower end of these you know 61 areas 62 to 61 70s are the uh the, the prime opportunities to look for any kind of long trades aussie uh uh, uh, Aussie yen 
And again, um, Aussie yen, I think from a risk on perspective, you would you know, just look to buy the Australian dollar, right? Um, and I do think if if intervention isn't working in the way that the uh, um, Bank of Japan is hoping, then in fact you could just see if any pullbacks should be actually buying opportunities. So if prices can pull back to that supply, um, that demand zone there, and you want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar, then brilliant. That would be a decent area to look for um, buy trades. Um, but if in intervention, um, you know, does start to um, uh, work in the market and the market is taking some notice of um, intervention then I do think that this area here is going to be the 96 area is going to be really nice and in fact even the 98 is going to be a fantastic area to look for any kind of uh, short trades um, moving on to finally gold and gold um, again still um, a tough one to buy at the moment especially with the Federal Reserve being so hawkish, and even though inflation is um, is 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 high, um, it looks like a lot of the money, smart money, um, if you want to call it smart money, but big money, uh, is still continuing to favour the U.S. dollar over gold, which is basically driving you know gold prices to the downside, right? Because they're actually getting a yield. Gold doesn't pay a yield, but this also presents a great opportunity if you believe that next year, right? Because it ultimately um we've got uh where are we i think it's here now what was the um this is it so a strong dollar seen hurting the u.s outlook and even tilting fed path right so there is going to come a point where the fed are going to stop hiking rates and then the focus is going to be on the economy and we're going to have to see the effects of a strong dollar um or the uh more specifically rate hikes on the economy and i think once the fed do start to um uh you know ease up on 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 rate hikes um i think gold will then you know go to uh, to the upside um but i think for now uh, or at least for this year it this is more of a you know central banks accumulating for cheap right not from a trading perspective it's difficult to trade this but um, I definitely think from a buying perspective physical gold this is actually a really nice buying opportunity and I think the further this goes uh, to the downside the cheaper it becomes and um, but when that recession talk starts in the US then I think that is definitely going to be the trigger right that especially when they even start to cut interest rates so um, that's going to be uh, very interesting but I think for now in the path of least resistance probably on gold unfortunately from a trading perspective is probably to the downside at least for the rest of the year but i think going into 2023 uh, right here i think we should maybe want to start to turn around once the fed do start their pivot so let's see what happens there anyways guys uh, that's it for um for this week and again don't forget um, to join the free Zoom call Thursday the 3rd of November actually I forgot to put the time apologies the time is going to be at 7 p.m. London time so 7 p.m. London time it will be in the description box below and um, hope to see many of you there I think I might actually have a limit on my Zoom which is a hundred people so if you can't get in unfortunately uh, we've maxed out so if you are in the first uh, 100 then brilliant if not um, I don't know whether I'm even gonna release this I might I might delay the release of course because a lot of people end up won't, might not end up coming right you might think so oh, I can just not come and I really want to reward the people that make the effort so I might not release any of these this um, uh, this this webinar um, I'll speak to Mark as well until maybe sometime even next year. So let's see what happens with that. But we do want to reward the people that do make the effort to come and um, give them a treat as well. And uh, you're going to find the information that I provide and Mark provides really, really, really useful. And it's going to be useful um, forever in a day because um, I'm going to show you, you know, some some more rules to the fundamental analysis trading game, which will give you an edge um, over the medium to long term over the short term 
price is quite unpredictable but i'm going to show you how you could have traded the euro dollar this year as well as the um the the dollar yen this year and uh how you could have predicted the uh the for, um the price you know movements that have happened this year and how we did uh with some um with some evidence of that of the uh of the posts that we posted in our discord group anyways guys hope you have a great trading week can't wait to see many of you in the uh zoom call on thursday 7 p.m london time and uh take care hope you have a great trading week and speak to you all soon